All right, good morning or afternoon or whenever you're watching this. Um, this is the section one of unit one for government and politics. So this will be for those of you who need to rewatch, um, those of you who are virtual and those of you who have your at home day today. Uh, so we are going to start with the origins and purpose of government. So um, the learning target is just analyzing the sources and the need for governmental authority that have developed through human history. So why do we have government? Um, we've already gone through the desert island activity. We are not doing the partner edition this year because of COVID. Um, so what we can learn, oh, well, that one we won't really do. Um, but so in theory, we were supposed to do the um, desert island activity by ourselves, which was was which was what we did and then we were supposed to do a group activity but i couldn't find a way for it to work virtually for everybody so um that's kind of how are we going to get to you know we're working with other people it's going to get complicated as you would know from group projects so how do we um relate the need for government when we get thrown on this desert island act um desert island what do you need to do there's a need for um having some authority so my favorite Hamilton, um, he has a thought on why government has been instituted at all, um, because the passions of men will not conform to the dictates of reason and justice without constraint. So what does he mean by this? Um, what he means is when people are left to their own devices, um, they're going to do what's best for them. They're going to do, they're looking out for number one. They're not going to worry about the other person or the neighbor that has no obligation to them, um, you know, they're looking out for themselves. So with, we learned, I learned about this in my, I think it was international relations or something, yeah, international politics. Anyway, there's a um, theory of tragedy of the commons, which has, is more economic related where, um, you know, having free reign of a, piece of land or something is going to lead to um, overuse and um, overpopulation and things like that. Um, but it really relates to government as well. If we don't have an authority or we don't have rules to follow, people are just going to do whatever they want. If there's no um, you know, consequences for their actions, if I see a house that I like, if there's no rule for me saying that I can't have a house because it's somebody else's, I'm going to take the house. Why wouldn't I want a nice house? Um, that's the kind of thing. It's a tragedy of having common shared spaces. Um, if you go to college, you're going to have to fight for parking if you're off campus. I would go around UWO for 15 minutes to find the best parking space. You know, there's more cars than there is parking spaces. That's the same thing. I'm not going to be like, oh, there's a person here that looks like they need a parking spot. I'm going to let them go. No, I'm going to take the parking spot. Um, so that's that's the basic understanding. So why we need government is because, you know, people, they have their um, wants and needs. And without any consequences, they're going to do what's best for them in their thoughts. Um, so the earliest known form of government has been dated back to 3000 BC. So it's been around for about 6,000 years. No, that's 5,000. Um, and so there's been a need for a governing body for a long time, um, even when there wasn't as big as population. So the definition of a government is an institution through which society makes and enforces its public policies. Uh, what are public policies? Uh, they are laws or actions that government does to protect the public good. Um, so what are some examples of public policies in the United States? Government um, has the power to make and carry out public policies. So there's that definition again. Um, they, through this, they have three basic types of power. Sorry, coffee. Um, and they're going to probably be pretty familiar from um, previous classes or grade school. I know I learned about it. Legislative power. So they're going to have the power to make laws. Um, executive power, they're going to have the powers to execute, enforce, and administer laws. So they're going to make the laws and they're going to make sure you follow them. And then judicial power um, is interpreting the laws. We're going to learn about that with the Constitution to see if they're constitutional or not. 
uh, determine the meaning of laws, and then if there's any disputes, they're going to settle them. So that corresponds with three branches of government, which we'll talk about more in depth later on in the semester. So again, with the purposes of government, they're, besides you know making and enforcing the laws um, for the public good, they're going to have several major purposes. One is to maintain social order, and that's really you know trying to get the people to do um, what they need to and not break laws that they've created and make everybody you know happy in theory. Um, this is going to be you know people can't live without conflict. The government provides a way to resolve it by putting limits on people. So um, with the capital, um, you know recently they stormed the capital and now all these people are realizing that they um, committed federal crimes and now they're going to have to serve their time or you know have their time in court. Um, to pay, you know, to pay for what they did and um, answer to what they did. Um, whether or not, you know, they think they were in the right or wrong is a different thing. They need to, you know, there's rules that you need to follow. Um, provide public services. So that's going to be these essential services that make community life possible. I believe I have. Yep. So sewer systems. Um, so those things that you really don't think about, like taking the garbage out every week. Where does the garbage go? The government provides that. Um, how do we get our water? Where do we get our heat? We're not, you know, making fire. We're turning on our, turning up our thermostat. Um, they're also going to provide national security. So, you know, to protect, oh, protect strong, spelled wrong, uh, protect people against the threat of attack or terrorism. So they're going to do that on a large scale. Um, make economic decisions. So that's going to be, um, you know, the budget and passing laws. Do we have a treaty with China? Do we have, uh, you know, pact with England and whatever, those types of things. Um, and then creating and controlling the national currency. So it's studying out if we have inflation and if there's a budget crisis or if there's a pandemic and we need stimulus money. So where do we get the power um, or where does the government get its power? Um, government gets its power from constitutions. And a constitution is a body of fundamental laws, and they set principles, structures, and processes of a government. So basically, it's the rule book, or you know how we have a student handbook. Um, that's you got to follow those rules. That's what a constitution is, and um, it'll give basically all the rules for the government to follow. Um, our constitution is the oldest written constitution still in use. So, what that can you know, kind of give you an idea of is either how stable our government is or how unstable other governments are. Um, I know Germany went through plenty of different um, governments in the early 1900s, and I think a few since Hitler, too, um, and Russia, too. And um, so it just kind of shows that the founding fathers were very... Um, you know, thoughtful and purposeful about what they were writing in the Constitution in order to last for 250-some years. Um, but not all constitutions are written down, um, and not all governments have constitutions. Um, these are referred to as unlimited governments or dictatorships. Um, what do you think the problems of having a constitution that's not written down would be? So purposes of the Constitution, um, it's going to set out the ideals that the population believes in and shares. So when we get to the Constitutional Convention, they're going to elect delegates that go there to speak what the people believe. It's going to define what the government's power is and what their duties to the people are. It's going to provide supreme law for the country. So um, Wisconsin can have its laws. It can't... Um, Restrict constitutional freedom. So let's, okay, so the freedom of speech. Um, we have the freedom of speech with the Constitution. Wisconsin cannot say, oh, you have the freedom of speech unless it's a Sunday, um, which is a silly rule, but that's it. So they can say, you have freedom of speech every day and give you, like, you can do freedom of speech all of these places, and um, but just can't restrict what the federal government gives you. We'll get into that more. Um, but basically, the supreme law is the Constitution. Um, and not everything is written down. We'll go through it more with enumerated and implied powers when we get to the Constitution. Um, 
about the differences, but not everything is going to be able to be written down, but they got most of the main details. Um, and this is where amendments come in handy. So the exit slip question for you today are what are some consequences of a country without a written constitution or not having one at all?